A spider's web can seem like a miracle of evolution. And yet, although spiders are the most adept creatures at building structures out of their silk, the ability to create silk and control it to some degree has evolved at least 20 times. And other amazing natural abilities like plants adapting some of their leaves to be able to digest small animals for nutrients has evolved over six times, whereas the evolution of flight is even rarer, with the majority of evidence pointing to it only having evolved four times. The bats, birds, and pterosaurs, and the first animals ever to take to the skies, the insects. So there are few evolutionary clubs as exclusive as being able to fly. However, the insects took this a step further, as they were not just the first animals to take to the skies, but also the only invertebrates to do so. And this means they had to overcome unique challenges not faced by other flying creatures, due to their very different anatomy, and due to the much earlier time, the very different world they were evolving to fly in. All the flying vertebrates gained the ability to fly by heavily modifying their forelimbs into wings, and a lot of the drive in their early evolution was to get better at hunting flying insects. For insects, both of these are either unlikely or impossible to be the case. So how did they evolve to fly? After the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs was when mammals rose up and became increasingly more diverse. Unsurprisingly, this is also when the first flying mammals evolved. The rocks very soon after the extinction are where you find the very first bat fossils, from around 50 million years ago. Birds diverged from tiny primarily carnivorous dinosaurs in the Jurassic period around 150 million years ago. Pterosaurs evolved from strange Triassic reptiles almost exactly around the same time as the dinosaurs first appeared, around 230 million years ago. However, insect flight is considerably older, beating the pterosaurs by nearly 100 million years. The overwhelming majority of living insect species can fly, or at least have evolved from animals that can fly, but then secondarily lost the ability, like ants for instance. The earliest insects in the fossil record date back to around 385 million years ago and look very similar to silverfish. This is because silverfish are living descendants of an ancient primitive wingless insect lineage that just never evolved the ability to fly, and survived to the present day. When insects took to the air though, it was a complete game changer. They saw a dramatic increase in their population and diversity, and most of the insect families alive today are descendants of the insects that evolved to fly known as the Pteragota. As there were no other flying animals at the time, the insects were able to spread out and adapt into all the flying niches with no competition. The earliest fossil of a flying insect was a small creature named Delitz Schala that dated all the way back to around 325 million years ago in the Carboniferous period. It was about the size of an average butterfly and despite being ancient, its fossil still shows its wings would have been patterned with spots. Delitz Schala was the oldest member of an order of mayfly-like insects named the Paleodectoptera that became incredibly common by the second half of the Carboniferous due to their at the time unrivaled ability to fly. There were no birds or bats flying in the skies at this time, but that didn't mean that the skies were void of large animals. One Paleodectopteran named Mazotherus had a wingspan of over half a meter long, making them marginally smaller than an average pigeon. Preserved mouthparts on many of the fossils show that barring a few species, they were most likely herbivorous, which is noteworthy because the early evolution of all the other flying groups, birds, bats, and pterosaurs, was largely driven by adapting to better hunt flying insects. But as insects were the first flying animals, there were no flying food sources around for them to hunt. The very first trees sprouted in the Devonian period, around 360 million years ago. But by the Carboniferous period, similar to today, forests had spread across much of the globe, only the trees weren't closely related to modern trees and were actually more like giant ferns, reproducing with spores instead of seeds. This meant that for the first time, there would have been ample food very high up that flying insects would have been uniquely adapted to take care of. So it makes sense that the earliest flying insects seem to have all been herbivorous. However, it didn't take long for multi-layered aerial food chains to develop. The first big group of predatory insects were known as the Meganesoptera that were related to dragonflies. So there was plenty of incentive for flying adaptations in the Carboniferous period, but how did the wings actually develop? The problem is that Delitz Schala not only had very well developed wings, but a fairly complex four-wing system already, 
similar to what some flying insects have today, and there are only a handful of scant controversial fossils that date before this. The oldest being a fossil of an animal named Rhinionatha that is 400 million years old. Rhinionatha had mandibles that looked similar to those of a dragonfly, leading some to speculate it may have been a flying insect. But this is controversial, with others thinking it was another type of bug. And even if it was an insect, its body did not survive the fossilization process, and so where its wings would have been if it had them did not survive. And so it still doesn't tell us about how the wings evolved. This lack of fossil evidence means that the formation of the insect wing is poorly understood. Despite this, there are two main hypotheses that aim to explain how insects came to have wings. The first is that insect wings are heavily adapted pre-existing limbs, and the other being that the insect wing is a completely novel structure. Interestingly, both of these theories were first proposed in one way or another over a hundred years ago, and the debate still isn't settled, as without fossil evidence, neither side can be disproven. The insect's closest relatives are not the arthropods, and not the myriapods, animals like millipedes or centipedes. In fact, they are actually crustaceans. The insects and some of their very close relatives are just crustaceans that left the water and then evolved to live on land. And this tells us a few things about their anatomy. Crustaceans have more than six legs, so the insects must have reduced the number of legs at some point in their evolution. In a lot of cases, the extra joints the crustaceans have are to aid them in swimming, and so the insects being on land wouldn't have had to use them anymore, and so could have modified them into other more useful structures. The most ancient of the flying insects are known as the Paleoptera, which contain dragonflies, mayflies, and Delichala and its relatives. The oldest mayfly fossil dates all the way back to the end of the Carboniferous, 300 million years ago. And although true dragonflies wouldn't appear until later, their very similar looking relatives, Meganesoptera, lived in this period. The Paleoptera are grouped together by a few primitive features, like being unable to fold their wings back when not using them, but mostly that they all start their lives out as aquatic creatures in their first life stage. So it is very likely that an aquatic larvae stage is ancestral to all flying insects. When in the larvae stage, mayflies have gills that are likely formed from ancient limbs left over from crustaceans. The gills are attached to joints with muscles that allow them to flap up and down, kind of like wings. And the gills even have similar patterns to some of the wings of insects leading some to believe that they may have been what was adapted into wings. The problem is that mayfly adult wings aren't formed from the gills of the nymph, and they actually have small undeveloped wings that they don't use until reaching adulthood. And the mechanism that moves wings in insects is actually quite structurally different to the joints in their legs. The main theory proposing that wings formed completely on their own is that they were produced from parts of the sides of the insect's exoskeleton. Many early insects have small flat parts of their exoskeleton that protrude from the sides of the midsection of their body known as paranotal lobes. These lobes are particularly prominent in some early flying insects like Delitzschala and their relatives that are so large they were once thought to be a third pair of wings. But more compelling, there are many fossils of small insects known from the Carboniferous period that are very likely to be the early life stage of the Paleodictoptera. These small creatures had the same large lobes near their head, but then had a second and third pair just behind them where the adults possessed their wings, meaning that these lobes could have been what gave rise to the insect wing. And some DNA evidence supports this as well. A smaller disagreement within the theory that insect wings may just be completely new structures is whether they formed from the top of the insect, known as the nota, that is made of a tougher material that makes their shell, or the side of the insect, known as the pleura which is where the arthropod limbs are usually formed from. However, there is some more recent DNA evidence from beetles that shows that the wings may have actually formed from both, known as the dual origin hypothesis. And this is supported by the Paleodictoptera nymphs, because study of their fossils has shown that the wing pads are fused to both the top and the sides of the insect, so they look like they have been formed from material out of both. So the full story of the evolution of insect flight isn't known, but more and more scientific discoveries keep filling in the gaps. However, the one thing for sure is that it was one of the best adaptations ever made by a group of animals. It turned insects from a relatively obscure group of animals into the most numerous and diverse known to have existed, now making up the majority of all species currently discovered. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. 
If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.